Hey everyone, welcome back to another live community classroom with Michaels. Today we have Edie Ekman with us ready for another exciting class. And today we'll be crocheting, crocheting the Easy Square Coasters. My name is Lillian from Yarnspirations and I'll be helping with any questions you might have during today's class. Feel free to ask questions in the chat here and we'll be sure that Edie answers them. And while we're getting started, let us know where you're watching from. Thanks, over to you Edie. Okay, great. Hi, welcome everybody. And this is a Granny Square for Beginners class. So I am assuming that you are beginners, like you haven't crocheted before, or maybe you've crocheted a little bit, but you haven't done Granny Squares. So I realize there, there's sort of two levels there of, of what's going on. Remember that you can always come back and watch this video later. So if you're not getting something that I'm explaining, you can always come back and watch later. So try not to get too discouraged, but I will try to go slowly enough that you can understand it at least when you come back and look at it again. So a granny square, let me talk for just a second before we start crocheting about what a granny square actually is. So we tend to use the term granny square to mean a lot of different things. So a lot of people use the term granny square to mean any crocheted motif that's square. And it can look like anything as long as it's square and work from the center out. I like to use the term granny square to mean a very specific thing. And that is a very specific type of square that's worked from the center out. So let's take a look at my hands here. And um, I have a granny square already made. This is the one that we're going to be working on. And if you can switch to my hand camera, I don't, I can't tell what's on right now. Sorry, Edie, um, it looks like it's freezing up. Oh, it should... okay. Um, there, move thing. How are we doing? Can you see my hands? Not yet. There we go. Okay. Sorry about that. That's all right. So here I have a one color granny square. So you may be familiar with granny squares that have multiple colors. Today, we're just gonna be working with one color of yarn because that's enough to learn on really. And granny squares typically have groups of three double crochet with a space in between. So if you look at this square that I have here, I started from the center out and I have sets of three double crochets and there's a chain space here that creates this space. And I'll show you how to make those in a minute. But as you go out each round, you're going to be putting double crochets into the spaces. So I like to sort of explain where we're headed with this before we get down to the step-by-step. -step. So just think overall, I'm a big fan of reading your crochet and understanding what's going on. So what we're going to be doing is we're gonna be working from the center out and we're gonna be working in rounds and creating this granny square. I am right-handed. I am going to be working in a counterclockwise direction. If you are left-handed, you're going to be working in a clockwise direction. So don't get confused with that. I'm gonna be working counterclockwise. You're gonna be working clockwise if you're left-handed, but it's all the same techniques. Okay, let's get started. I'm going to use uh, Red Heart Super Saver in this nice bright green color. So hopefully you'll be able to see it. And I am using a size I9 5.5 millimeter crochet hook. So that is the um, size that's called for in our pattern. And that's what I'm going to be doing. If you have the pattern, you can follow along. There's some nice pictures here that um, are still photos. So you can see what's going on. So to begin with, I'm going to create a slip knot on my hook. To do that, I'm going to make a little twist and then flip that over. Let's see, flip this over and go underneath and grab the yarn. So that slip knot is on my hook now and I can just pull on the yarn to create that slip knot and it can be as loose as I need it to be. Now, there are many different ways that you can hold a hook. You can hold it in what's called pencil grip, which is like this, or knife grip, which is overhand like this. And either way is fine. I happen to hold my yarn, uh, sorry, my hook in a pencil grip. And as I say, I'm right-handed. So I'm gonna hold it in my dominant hand. 
in my other hand, my non-dominant hand, I need to tension the yarn somehow. So different people do different things. They might wrap it around their pinky like this. They might run it in and out through their fingers like this. The main thing is you want to have some sort of control over it. And I want to have the working yarn coming over my index finger from back to front. So once I get set up in this neutral position, I've got the yarn coming over my index finger from the back to the front. And I've got the yarn, in this case, I just have it pulled through my fingers like this. I'm going to use my thumb and my middle finger to pinch whatever's coming off my hook. So remember that slip knot that I made? I can actually let go of the hook because I'm pinching what's coming underneath, all right? But I'm not normally gonna do that. So here I have set up in what I call a neutral position. And anytime you get confused, you can always come back to this position because this is where you're gonna start from. So our first instruction is to, I have to look at the thing, make a slip knot and place it on the hook, which we did, and then chain four. To chain, I'm going to do a yarn over. And that means I'm going to push back with my hook so that the yarn crosses over the hook this way. And notice when I push back as a right-hander, the yarn is going from my upper right to my lower left. Then I'm going to pull that loop that I just, that yarn over I just did through the loop on, through the slip knot. Notice that I'm pulling the hook down, rotating it down a little bit. And there's my first chain. I'm gonna move my fingers, readjust my hands, do another chain, push back and then pull through. Notice when I push back, the hook is facing me, but when I pull through, I'm sort of rotating it down. And I wanna make sure that I'm not pulling too tightly here. One more, I've got one, two, three, four chains. Now I need to form this into a ring to start my um, granny square. So I'm going to slip stitch in the first chain that I did. So count backwards, one, two, three, four, not into my slip knot, but into the fourth chain from my hook. I put my hook in and do a yarn over and pull through both of those to create a ring. And you can't see it very well, but I can stick my finger right in through the middle of that ring. And that's where I'm going to be putting my first stitches. They're going to go into the ring, not into the chains, but into that ring. So sometimes I find it helpful to actually kind of stick my finger through there so I can actually see where I'm going to be putting my stitches. All right, now we've done what's on the first page of the pattern. And so I'm going to flip so I can see what it says. I know how to do this without a pattern, but I wanna make sure that I am following the pattern. Okay, the next thing is to chain three. Well, we know how to chain. I'm gonna set up my neutral position again. Chain one, chain two, chain three. And that's going to count as a double crochet. So we're gonna pretend that's a double crochet and put two more double crochets into this ring down here. Remember what's way, way down here. To do a double crochet, I start with a yarn over and then I put my hook into the ring. Watch, see my finger there, I can see the ring. I just stick my hook right into that ring, come up here and do another yarn over pull that yarn over up through the ring. Now I have three loops on my hook. Then I do a yarn over, pull it through just two of those, and then yarn over again and pull it through two. And that's my double crochet. I'm gonna do another one of those. I'm gonna set up again in my neutral position, double crochet, yarn over, 
reach down into that ring, do another yarn over and pull up a loop through the ring. Then yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Okay. So I have done my chain three, which is going to count as a stitch, and then two more double crochets. Now my instructions have a little bit of a bracket going on here. And it says bracket, chain three, work three double crochet in ring, bracket twice. That means do what's within those brackets two times. So I'm gonna go back and do a chain three again. One, two, three. And I'm gonna put three more double crochets into this same ring. So yarn over, go into the ring, yarn over, pull up a loop, I've got three loops. Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Then one more time, yarn over, go into the ring, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over, pull through two. Then one more time, I'm gonna do a double crochet. Now, I know this is going a little bit fast right here, but some of you already know how to do double crochet. So my plan is to get you around this ring and then I'm gonna go back a little bit, okay? So my instructions tell me to do that again. Chain three, work three doubles, and I'm gonna go fast now because I showed you the double crochet and then I'm gonna go back and repeat myself just a little bit. Remember, you can always go back and watch the video again. One, all right, so I did a chain three, three doubles, chain three, three doubles. Now my instructions tell me one more time, chain three, whoops. And there's supposed to be four groups. I may not be reading this quite right. One, two, three, and then chain three, one, two, three. So let me stop right here for a moment and talk about what we have. I did a beginning ring. I did a chain three, which got my hook up to the, to the level of the first round so that I can work double crochets. I put two double crochets into the ring and then I did a corner space, which was chain three. I did another group of three doubles and a corner space and another, another group of three doubles and a corner space and another group of three doubles and here's my chain three corner space and I need to join with a slip stitch in the top of this chain three. Remember that this chain three counts as a double crochet. So I need to join, I pretend it's a double crochet and I'm going to work right under two strands of the top of that chain three. So I put my hook in, yarn over and pull through everything, pull through everything to finish off the first round. And hopefully you can see that, that it is three groups of double crochet and three, uh, four, uh, sorry, groups of three double crochets, there are four of them and four corners, okay? So I'm gonna stop right there for just a minute because I know some people are getting a little behind. I can't completely slow down for everybody, but remember you can come back and watch it again. So I'm going to go back and do that one more time, this time with the, with the orange. I'm going to chain four, 
three. So, sorry, Evie, I'm just yeah. going to jump in. We're having a little bit of um, lag on the camera. Oh, okay. So I think it's I think it's uh, that combined with um, the speed that we're having a little bit of trouble with. Oh, it's, okay. it, yeah, it's hard for people to see just because it's a little bit blurry. And I'm not sure why the camera is a problem. Um, I'm hardwired into it, so. Um, Edie, it's been saying that your bandwidth is low, uh, so I turned off your front-facing camera. Okay. Um, again, Maybe if, yeah. Uh, I, uh, some some of the people in here, if you could turn off your cameras as well, maybe that would help um, Edie's okay. image. Okay, I, I apologize. I don't know what the problem is. So, all right, I'll do the ring again. So I have the four chains and I'm going to insert my hook into that very first chain. So I'm counting back four chains. Doing a yarn over and pulling it through. There's my ring. And I'm going to put my finger right into that ring so I can see where to put my hook the next time. Now, I may just keep my finger there for a minute if I want to. Chain three, one, two, three. And then I'm going to put two double crochets into that ring. So a double crochet is yarn over insert my hook right into the middle of the ring, right into that space, yarn over and pull up a loop. Then yarn over, pull through two and yarn over, pull through two. Let's do that one more time. Yarn over, go into the ring. Now, let me show you, I have this yarn tail here and I like to work over my yarn tail. It helps uh, secure the yarn tail. So when I put it through the ring, I'm actually kind of putting it behind that yarn tail too. So I'm gonna go in, do my yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over, pull through two. If you have never held a crochet hook and yarn before, I'm obviously going to be going too fast. You're gonna to have to slow down and watch this a little bit slower because it's just not possible to get the comfort level until you practice a little bit. So I, I realize I can't go, it, it would take us more than an hour to do the granny square if I really went slowly. Okay, so I've done my two double crochets. I'm gonna put three chains, one, two, three, and I'm gonna put another three double crochets. One, two, three, and three more chains, oops. And if you split your yarn, you wanna take your hook out and start over so that it's not split. And sometimes you notice how my ring, like there's not space there. I can just slide my stitches around that ring to make a little more space. Three more double crochets, one, two, three, another, and then I have one, two, three, I need one more group. So now I'm reading my crochet rather than reading my pattern because I can just see what I need to do here. It's a square, so it needs four sides and four corners, which is exactly what I've got here. One, two, three, and then Join to the top of that chain three. Okay. So there's round one, one more time. Let's move on to round two. And I kind of like working with this green yarn. So that's what I'm going to do. The next thing is I've ended 
my round here, but I need to start my round over here in the corner. So what I'm going to do is slip stitch, which is put my hook in the next stitch under both loops, yarn over, pull through, that's one, and then go in, yarn over, pull through everything. That was two slip stitches in the next two double crochets and then into the next space. So now I just put my hook, see I can just stick my hook right into that big old space right there. Yarn over and pull through. So now I have moved my hook over to the corner so that I can keep working and start round three. Round three is one, two, three chains, which gets me up. That's my first double crochet. And in this same space right here, I'm gonna work a bunch of stitches, a bunch of stitches. Yarn over, go in, yarn over and pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. I'm gonna do another one of those. So that is my first set of three. And now I need to do a corner. The corner is chain three, one, two, three, and then three more doubles in this same space. And by the way, for those of you who are having trouble, if you, if you don't follow along on this one, I also have a video on my YouTube channel that talks you through a granny square. All right, so here I am on my first, I've done my first corner of the second round. Three doubles, chain three, three doubles. I'm gonna jump over to the next corner and do the same thing. I'm gonna put three double crochets. And then a corner space, which is chain one, two, three, and then three more doubles. So there is another corner. I'm going to skip over here to this space. Guess what I'm gonna do? It's the same thing. This is why granny squares are so awesome because once you understand how they're made, you can just go with it. So chain three, one, two, three, and then three more doubles. One, two, Three. So if I get interrupted at this point and the phone rings or something and I come back and I say, oh, what do I need to do? Oh, well, I've done a corner here. I've done a corner here. I've done a corner here. I've got one more corner to do. One, two. I don't expect you to be going as fast as I am here, three, then a space, and three more doubles in that corner. One, two, three. All right, so now it's time to join this round and end it off. So to join, I'm going to put my hook into the top of my chain three. See, there's my chain one, two, three. I'm gonna put my hook into the top chain and slip stitch, yarn over and whoops, pull through everything. There's the end of my second round. Round three begins with slip stitch in the next two double crochets because I have to move my hook. So I'm going to go 
under both loops at the top of the stitch. Yarn over and pull through everything. That's my first slip stitch. Into the next stitch, yarn over, pull through, and then I have to end up in the corner. So I'm going to go into that space, yarn over, and pull through. So now I'm set up and ready to begin the next round. All right, so I'm going to chain three, one, two, three. The corners are going to be the same. So I'm gonna zoom through this corner a little bit, which is two more doubles, chain two, and then three doubles in that same space. So more than anything, I want you to understand that the corners are basically three doubles, chain three, three doubles. Whoops, did I do chain three there? I don't think I did. Let me go back. One, two, three, and then three doubles. But now we get to add a little bit more excitement. And that is on this round three, I've got an extra bit of space going on here. When I made my corners, there's a space between the corners. Can you see that? Right here, there's a space between the corners. So I need to put another set of three doubles right there into that space. The nice thing is all I have to do is yarn over, go into the space, I'm not trying to go into a stitch, I'm going boom, right there into the space, and then do my double crochet. And I'm gonna do three of those right there all into the same space. And then now I'm at my next corner. And I am going to answer questions after. So if you're asking questions in the chat, I'm, I, will, I will get to as many of those as I can after I finish demonstrating these four rounds. So here I am doing another corner. There's a corner. Now I'm gonna do another space which is three double crochets into that space. One, two, three, and then time for a corner. So I'm gonna zoom around here because the corners are the same. Three doubles, chain three, And three more doubles. And then another side, so three doubles. And let's see where we are. We have another corner and another side to do. So three here. Chain three. Three more doubles in the corner. And then one more space here, you can see it happening. There are three doubles in here. Now, let me put this down so you can see what's been going on here. I've got my corners, I've got my sides, and it's time to join the top of the chain three 
with a slip stitch. Now, I'm not gonna go ahead and do round four because it's the same thing, but I would just slip stitch across to the corner here and start, might do a corner here. Now on the next round, I've got two side spaces here. So there would be a three double crochets in this space, three double crochets in this space. You can see that in this square that I've done, you've got the corners and the two sets of three double crochets. So one thing that happens or one, one question you may have is, I didn't have any chain one spaces here. There are different kinds of granny squares, different kinds of granny square patterns. So sometimes granny, your granny square pattern will tell you to put a chain one space between these sets of three double crochets. Because we're going from a specific Yarnspirations pattern that does not use those side spaces. That's why I'm not using a, um, a chain one space here, but there are some patterns that will tell you how to do a granny square and have you do maybe a chain two corner with chain one spaces along the side. So it's really kind of hard to know, um, like not hard to know, but you want to make sure that you are following the specific pattern that tells you how to do it. So sometimes you will see a chain one space there. Sometimes the corners will be chain two instead of chain three. Those are all valid granny squares, if you will. Just like the valid granny squares, you can change color every round. You can work with a magic loop in the center, magic ring, if you know how to do that. Some granny squares have had, um, uh, start with a chain five, some start with a chain three. So, um, you know, that's, those are variations on granny squares. Um, so before I go on, I know that there's some problems with the video freezing and I'm sorry about that. I don't know, I've done quite a few of these Zoom um, classes and have never had this problem before. So I don't know whether it's on my end or whether it's Zoom or, or whatever. Um, but I do have a video on granny squares that you can watch on YouTube too. So are there questions, Lillian? I, I felt like I should stop and I know there were a lot of questions going on and I wanted to make sure that I answered those if I could before going on and doing round four. Yeah, that would be great. There's a few questions here. Um, sorry, let me just scroll back up. There's a question here from Dylan. They ask, can you use magic ring instead of chaining? Absolutely. One at the start? Yeah, so where I started with a chain four on these, you can certainly use a magic ring if you know how to do it. And it's going to start with, you're gonna end up with a smaller beginning circle. Notice that this green circle um, or this green granny square has a fairly large center. This orange one, I probably used a magic ring and it's a much smaller circle to start with. So yes, absolutely. If you know how to do that, you certainly can. It's not necessarily a beginner technique. So we're not worried about that. Yep. Okay. Thank you. That's super helpful to see. And Elaine says, uh, sometimes in a pattern, I see a chain one connecting each space. Right. I wonder if you could just tell us about that. Yeah, so let me back up a little bit on this granny square, just to show you what some patterns are going to, to tell you. So this is not the pattern we're doing today, but I'll show you what some patterns will tell you. You would, in a corner, you would have three doubles, chain two, three doubles. So that would be your corner. And then you would have a chain one to bridge this gap right here over the three doubles. And then you would put three doubles in the next space, which would be a chain one space if we had been doing that. And then you would have a chain one 
and then you would put your three doubles, chain two, three doubles. And I actually probably have a sample of that uh, somewhere. Let me see if I can. It's, it's not a huge difference, but what happens then when you do that is you do end with a chain one at the end of your round and I'll show you what happens there. So I have my corner, I would do a chain one to bridge that gap. I put my three doubles in here. And now the last stitch would be a chain one because I would need to bridge this gap right over here. So chain one and then join with the slip stitch. And what that does is it just opens up the granny square a little bit more. Um, it, it makes it a little easier to work into these chain one spaces. And you can even see that there's a little more space here than there is on this side when I didn't have a chain one space. So it's just a variation of the same thing, but you would end with that chain one um, because that's a chain one space. Okay, and we have another question here from Anna. They ask, how large would you recommend the granny square be uh, for say, a, like a baby blanket versus ah. an adult blanket? Okay, that's a great question. So there's so many things you can do with granny squares. As a matter of fact, on Thursday, I'm gonna be talking about the versatility of granny squares and we'll be talking about making things with granny squares. So you can either make one giant granny square. So you would just keep going in this, you know, round and round and round, changing colors, whatever, and make it, I don't know, 30 or 32 inches square. So, you know, baby blanket size, I guess you would say, or you can make, multiple squares of like four inches in different colors and put them together. So if I had, these aren't the same color, but you know, I could make multiple, I mean the same size, I could make multiple granny squares and either seam them together or do a join as you go and make a blanket out of multiple granny squares, which is I think what most people think of when they think of a granny square blanket, they think of that thing with so many colors on it. Um, and that's always a fun thing to do. But if, the nice thing about doing squares like this, and I would say this is like four and a half inches across, this one's maybe five inches across, um, you can sort of make them any size you want because you can just stop whenever you want. You can do one round, two rounds, three rounds or whatever. So to totally um, easy, you know, to decide how big you want to make it. And kind of a related question from Elizabeth. She asks, uh, when you're making multiple squares, what do you do to make sure they all end up the same size? Ah, okay. Well, if you are using the same yarn and the same hook or the same brand of yarn, same type of yarn, then they should end up the same size if you're doing the same number of rounds. In other words, if I decided I wanted to make something using Red Heart Super Saver and I wanted to use a bunch of different colors like this one, um, I'm gonna say one, two, three, four. This is four rounds. And I say, well, that's a nice size. I'm gonna make all of my squares with this hook and this yarn, and I'm gonna make them four rounds. They should be the same size. If you're changing yarns or using scrap yarns, you may have to play with your hook size a little bit and the number of rows to get them the same size because different yarn is gonna have different gauge and work up a little bit differently. So that's that's a little more challenging if you're switching up and using a bunch of different yarns. Okay, good to know. Mm -hmm. And there's another question here from Christina. She asks, uh, my, my granny squares always seem to turn to the right when I'm finished, what should I do? Okay, so if you have granny squares that are skewing, so they sort of um, turn this way or turn this way, what's happening is you aren't putting, it, um, the stitches aren't quite sitting in the space um, as, as well as they could be. In other words, they're skewed off to one side or another. And one of the things I do to fix that, or one of the things you can do to fix that, let me scoot back here a little bit, is every few rounds, instead of doing three double crochets, and a corner and three double crochets. You could do two double crochets 
and a corner and then four double crochets, which seems kind of weird. I actually have a link. I don't know, Lillian, if you can find this, I have a link on my blog about skewing grannies. And um, that's something I'll see if I can share that. Um, so, because I, I talk about how to solve this. Now, I know this looks a little bit weird, but if you do, um, two, then a corner, then four. On every corner, not every round, but every few rounds, chances are that's going to um, shift your corners back in line with each other. If you're working, if you're left-handed and you're working in this direction, um, it's still two and four. If your corners are skewing the other way, you're going to do four, then two. So you may have to play with it a little bit, but I will sometimes just change my corner placement a little bit and that kind of nudges things back okay so so that's that's my tip for skewing grannies yep thank you for sharing that blog post yeah so it's in the chat if anybody would like it um we do have a couple more questions if there's time um Oh, I see Melanie also asked about, um, oh, sorry, Lola also asked about uh, keeping crochet pieces straight, but I think you've answered that mm -hmm. now. So I will, I'll keep going with, uh, I'll finish <laughs> round three and I'll keep going with round four. So we will finish this, but it's um, pretty much the same, same thing. So. Okay, here's a good question from Larry. They ask, what color should I use when joining them? Oh, good question. Well, it kind of depends on what you're using to join. Okay, so there are different ways that you can join. If you are sewing them together, which by the way, ick, I don't like to sew together, but some people do, you're probably going to want to use um, one of the colors along your edge, right? So if I were sewing, Again, they're not the same size. I'd want them to be the same size. But if I were sewing these together, I'd use either the orange or the blue. If I'm seaming them with a with a with like a single crochet seam or slip stitch seam, you can use any color you want because sometimes that seam can be a, a decorative element. So maybe you want to use a contrasting color to, to um, do a slip stitch seam. That's hard to say slip stitch seam or single crochet seam. The way I like to join is called join as you go, which is a topic for another night, but you can use the last round, you're, you're joining one square to another square as you work the last round. So in that case, you're using whatever the last round would be. If I were joining this square to this square, I would be joining using the blue because I would be joining it as I go. So it's really up to you because you're the designer and you can choose whatever you want, whether you want it to be decorative and contrasting or whether you want it to sort of fade into the background, in which case you're going to use the same color as, as one of your squares. Okay. Thank you. That was super helpful. I think I've covered everyone's questions. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and finish and go round four, just to show you slip stitch, slip stitch, and then slip stitch again. So I'm over here in the corner and I'll do another corner. So I, I wish I could hear everybody talking because I want you to tell me, say it out loud to yourself if you need to, what makes a corner for this one? Well, it's going to be two more doubles and chain three. One, two, whoops, three, and then three more doubles in that corner. And I split my yarn again. I don't know why I'm having problems with that tonight. Probably because I'm not wearing my glasses. All right, so we finished a corner. So what happens next? We jump over to this space and do three more doubles. One, two, 
three. And then another side space. You see, I'm not at the corner yet, so I need another group of doubles in this next side space. And then I'm at a corner. So one, two, three, three, one, two, three, and then three more. So I'm just gonna zoom around here because hopefully you get the idea. There's my corner. Anytime I come up on a side space, I put in three. I've got another side space. So I'm gonna do another three. And I'm at a corner and it takes longer. You notice each round takes a little longer because you've got more stitches. So when you're doing a granny square blanket or something, it can certainly get, you know, can take you a while to get around because each round gets longer and longer. So here we are. The other nice thing about granny squares is once you learn to do a double crochet and you do a granny square, you really know how to do a granny, I mean, know how to do a double crochet. And you can get a rhythm down. I know a lot of people who crochet granny squares without ever looking. They just get started and just work with, you know, watch TV, watch, watch the baseball game or whatever without even looking. All right, so I, I happen to see a question about how corners, on corners, how can you be sure which stitch on the chain to go into? You are not going into a stitch on the chain. Let me come back here. All of the stitches in the granny square, every single stitch in the granny square, except the slip stitch at the end of the round, and the slip stitches at the beginning of the round are going into a space. I am putting everything into this space right here, right here. I'm not trying to dig into, I'm not going like this. I'm doing my yarn over. I'm going into the space right there. I'm just sticking it in there, yarn over and doing my double crochet. And I'm doing that every time I'm just going into a space. The nice thing about that is if I start thinking I'm running out of room in there, you see how I've put three double crochets and it looks like I don't have room in there. I can just slide those stitches over because they're in the space. They're around the chain, not into the chain. So do my chain three. Finish my corner. And do, let's see where I am. I've got two more side spaces to complete this round. So there's one, two, three. And then another one, two, three. And now this next example is the only time I'm actually going into a stitch. And that is when I put my hook in through the top of this stitch to do that slip stitch to join and finish off that round. So now I've done one, two, three, four rounds of this granny square, okay? And then to end, I'm going to cut my yarn, leaving probably a four or five inch tail because I wanna have plenty to weave in and then yarn over and pull that yarn tail through that stitch 
and pull it down tight so that it won't come undone. Now I've got two ends that I need to weave in. And I'm gonna reach over here and get my yarn needle to weave in the ends. So remember when I started, I was working over that yarn tail, but that's not enough. I need to go back and put my yarn, <clears throat> excuse me, put my yarn tail under some of these stitches and go in a couple of different directions. So I threaded my yarn needle and I'm gonna go back and forth under these stitches a few times because I don't want that tail to come undone. So I can go in that direction, this direction, and maybe go back in the other direction. So I'm gonna do that two or three times and then I'll be able to cut that end off. And I wanna do the same thing with my ending yarn tail. In this case, I want to find some solid stitches here to go under. So maybe I'll go under these strands. Maybe I'll go under these strands. That's not enough. I wanna keep going. I'm gonna go under some other stitches and maybe Kitty. come back. Yep. We have a question from Kelly. And they ask, why can't you just cut the tail off? Well, if you just cut the tail off, then it's going to work itself loose. So if I, let me see if I can find, let me, let me use this little example right here. I have this tiny little granny square here. So if I fasten off and pull the yarn tail through and then cut it off, and then I do anything with it, okay? So you see my yarn tail right there? Look what just happened. If I, have, if I pull on it in any way at all, it's gonna come undone. So I wanna, after all this hard work I've done, I wanna spend another three seconds weaving in my yarn tail so it doesn't go anywhere. Let me see what happens if I just cut off this beginning tail that I did earlier. All right, so there's my little yarn tail. And as I work, you know, as I'm, I don't know, playing with my afghan or something, that yarn tail is eventually going to work itself out and it might all fall apart. So you see how easily that came apart? You, you definitely want to weave in your ends. Absolutely want to weave them in. And I like to weave them in in multiple um Multiple, multiple directions. If you are leaving just a one inch or two inch yarn tail, you aren't really leaving yourself enough tail to weave in securely and your pieces might come apart and you're really not saving that much money. I mean, if you think you're saving an inch, what's it, is it penny, what is it, penny wise and pound foolish or something like that? You're saving a couple of pennies, but then your piece may fall apart. And who wants that to happen? So I would say definitely leave a little bit longer tail and then weave in your ends. Okay. Other questions? Yeah, we had a question from Patty asking about how to block your granny square. Ah, good question. Let me get a drink. The way you block is going to depend on the, the um, fiber that you used. So these are acrylic. You want to be really careful because you don't want to use too much heat because too much heat can like never put an iron on acrylic yarn because it will melt. You will kill your acrylic. That's actually the term we use for it. Um, so you definitely do not want to iron your acrylic, but there are safe ways to do it. You can cold block it. You can pin it out and spritz it with a um, like a plant mist or something and that will um, and then let it dry or you can carefully use steam to block it, or you can get it totally wet and then pin it out. So there are many ways you can do it. Also, I have um, a blog post on how to block knitting and crochet. So that may be another um, link. I don't know, Lillian, if you have time to find that one. I never knew what I needed to um, have ready for you, but I have actually have a, a blog post and a video about what happens when you kill your acrylic. So you can watch for that because too many of us have killed our acrylic in the past. 
And it's a good idea to block it. Not everything needs to be blocked, but I like to say that blocking, if you ever sew anything, you know how important it is to use an iron when you sew? Like if you sew without ironing things, it doesn't look very good. I think most knitted and crocheted objects are gonna look better if you block them. So absolutely. Any other questions? I'm not feeling confident, but I think, I think we've covered everything. Uh, Laura says, uh, thank you so much. I've always been afraid to try um, and you've made this make sense. She's looking Great. forward to trying it tonight. So thank you very much, Edie. Great, thank you. And I apologize, I don't know what's going on. No one else in my house was using the internet. So I don't know what was going on with the, you know, with the freezing thing. It's back to school or something, I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, I think the whole world is trying to use the internet right now, right? Right. That must mm -hmm. be it. Okay. Anything else? Sue says this was awesome and she was able to finish one. And Lola says thank you. Sue says right. thank you. So um, Granny Square, this is just the tip of the iceberg. There are so many awesome things you can do with Granny Squares. And Thursday afternoon, I'm going to be back here talking about the versatility of granny squares and some of the things you can do with it and showing you some other examples of um, what we can do with granny squares and things that aren't granny, but that are square, if that makes any sense. So I look forward to that too. Yes, I'm very curious now. And I have a beautiful blanket to share. So mm, can't yeah. wait to see. No, it's pretty. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much, Edie. Thank you. Thanks. Good night. Thanks everyone for joining us for this live community classroom with Michaels. And don't forget to share your work with hashtag make it with Michaels and hashtag Yansfo. And just a reminder that you can find more classes on michaels.com and the recording of today's class at michaels.com slash classes. Thanks again, Andy. Thanks everyone. Bye-bye.